Uh. Hi everybody, it's Marnie Stone here with the incredible Farmer Bob on Wednesday morning. Nice. Yes it is, hi folks. <laughs> <laughs> We're out at the beautiful Mockingbird Hill Farm and it's a gorgeous morning out there today. And um, just here to have a little chat with Farmer Bob about his new book that he has out called The Canadian Bushwhacker. And uh, we've had a few copies at the store and they're sold out already, but we've got more coming, right? They're on the way. That's yeah. great. By Slay? No, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so the book came out when, just a couple of months ago or how long has it been out now? It's, it's been available for about three weeks now. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, it's, it's done surprisingly well. Wherever it went, it sold out. I just had another call this morning from the art gallery looking for more. So I'm really pleased with the response. And uh, Coles told me that they had well over a hundred uh, inquiries, people looking for it. So uh, wow. I guess it just has to get here. It's unfortunate it wasn't here for Christmas, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. well, people can put a reserve on it. So when the copies come in, they can put their name on one. That's sure. Right. Yeah. And you got several thousand coming in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have that much work in capital, Marty. <laughs> I'm working on a just-in-time inventory. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm a farmer here. I'm not a downtown mogul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I, I look back to when I first started working and um, my career, and you were one of the first people that hired me at uh, Ojidaki several decades yeah. ago. Yeah. And uh, it was such a great, great store in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh -huh. It was so, you were ahead of your well, time, you know? It, it was great, and you were probably one of the best, if not the best, student salesman I ever had. And you were with me for a year. Then your dad took you home, the son of a gun. <laughs> yes, you he went did. to Stone's <laughs> office supplies after you're all trained and making me all kinds of dough. You left me. <laughs> it was such a fantastic store. I'm sure many of you remember Ojidaki, and um, then of course there was Wildflowers on Queen. It was a my favorite store ever. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful uh, lines of clothing in such a beautiful setting. It was such a great shop. And yeah. you had that sign, that wildflower sign. That's, that's what I came out of that uh, adventure with. I came out of, out of it with that sign and a memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good memories though. And Calico uh, Silver too. Yeah. Uh, that was such a beautiful, beautiful place. Great, great memories, and you helped make uh, the the women of Sault Ste. Marie look extra special with yeah. your yeah, your eye. Right from the bush to a uh, dress buyer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I bought my clothes at Operation Reclaim, and six months later I'm uh, uh, down in Toronto buying dresses, and I had a propensity for lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> You're versatile. Yeah. You're very versatile. <laughs> So, um, I, how did you get the, I, I uh, gotta get this, just a sec. Oh, sure, no problem. Yeah. You gotta get the door. Let's see who's at the door. We'll flip this around. Hi, Carol. How are Hi, you? Hi, Good, how are you? <laughs> this one here is a signature. Is it? It is. Okay, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> Have you been busy? Extremely, yeah. Extremely? How about you? Getting home at dark every day. Yeah. Are you? Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I called you for a dinner, but I, I think by this time you'll think I'm stalking you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, the name of the farm, how did you name this this farm, Mockingbird Hill? It, it came from a little uh, Patty Page song that was out in the 50s called Mockingbird Hill. And it was just uh, such a pretty idyllic little tune that, you know, shrouded your world in peace and contentment and uh beautiful that's where it came from yeah. i don't think mockingbirds are even native to this area it's just uh, it was an evocative name beautiful yeah. so fitting beautiful so um you're selling some christmas trees out here too that's i uh, am we're, ju we're just about done you know we're uh, out cutting today and that's going to be it i think for the mm -hmm. season it's been a great season Oh, that's good. Yeah. I noticed that there's not as many people selling 
Christmas trees in town like there used to be. Yeah, one one guy, Jeff Flynn, used to be down at the Moose Lodge, and he sold his farm, mm -hmm. so he's out of the business now. He used to call me every Christmas to monitor how many trees I was selling, and we compare notes. And uh, he's been he had farmed all his life. His first question was always. Barber Bob, are you mean yet? <laughs> so, I said, no, Jeff, I'm not mean yet. Well, then you haven't farmed long enough yet. You won't be mean. <laughs> Is that the flight from the strawberry flight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. right. Oh, he's a character too, isn't yeah. he? Well, farming takes uh, such grit and determination mm. and passion to be able to, you know, do that, do those chores yeah. and work the land each day, feed the animals, and how many horses do you have now? Just two. I've only had just a, a pair, and the, uh, you know, until a few years back, we used to do everything here with horses, all the field work, everything, and now we're, they're just doing sleigh rides, and the rest of the time they're ornamental. And they're so and, beautiful. Uh, what are yeah. their names? Names are Ike and Jeb, and uh, yeah, with these horses and with others, I figured out, Marnie, I've been the equivalent of around the world twice <laughs> staring at horses' rear ends. <laughs> Which oh, dear. my friends say explains me. <laughs> or and excuses me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And are there still um, some sleigh ride slots available? If somebody wants to come out and have a, a sleigh ride over the holidays, are there still some yeah, spots? Yeah, available? there's, you know, the occasional spot now, mostly it opens up on New Year's Day and beyond, mm -hmm. but uh, there are cancellations, so they're, you know, possible. And how many people can you fit on a sleigh ride? It'll take a weight equivalent to 14 adults, an average weight of 150, flattering number, isn't it? <laughs> and they, uh, you work your kid into that weight, kids into that weight allowance. Mm. Very good, 14. Okay, that's good, a party of 14. And do you still do the little, uh, the cutty? The, well, the little what cutty we do sleigh? is I set up the big sleigh as a, a big hay bale couch. Mm -hmm. it, uh, got a lantern on it, the front of the sleigh to give the nice glow over the snow. Oh, and beautiful. We give you a cutter throw to cuddle up in and invite you to bring snacks or, you know, Baileys or whatever. Right. <laughs> Something like that. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That sounds very nice. You gotta fit that in this this winter for sure. Um, so just a little bit more getting back to your book. Sure. When did the idea come about for you to to make that a reality? It. Uh, I used to write little uh, tiny stories for the Gulligan. I don't if you remember, I remember that. that. Yes, yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. So that got me started, and I also wanted to learn how to keyboard and to learn the computer. So that gave me a, a reason, and uh, to pass the time between sleigh rides, that's why I did it, and to leave a, a record for my kids that they might be amused by. Oh. That's, that's, and I was having fun with it that's too. That's good. Yeah. Well, you are such an incredible, uh -huh. incredible writer. I always enjoy your posts on Facebook, and um, you know, anytime chatting with you, you're you're so witty and clever and <laughs> you. uh, your words, you have yeah. a beautiful, beautiful way with words. So I'm really looking forward yeah. to reading your book and oh, I'm, great. Yeah. I'm so glad that it's doing well for you. Yeah, and thank you. How long did it take to put it together? Is it? I, I played with it uh, for about five years and I only did it when I really, really felt like it. If I didn't feel like, it, I'm not a writer. Uh, advertise myself as a word butcher, you know, that <laughs> don't know nothing about grammar or punctuation. You know? <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. It sounds like you know lots about it. No. <laughs> Language is malleable as far as I'm concerned. Oh. So, but it all came out, uh, you know, the kids like it and that's, that's what counts. Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's, it's going to be a fantastic read. And what do you uh, read on your own when you're not writing? Do you have something that you, uh, a newspaper or a website or a, a, an author that is your favorite that you like to read? Well, the, I've read a lot of Canadiana and uh, I always love Pierre Burton. Klondike is my favorite book and uh, I think it's the greatest piece of Canadiana ever oh. written. You know? so. A lot of stuff like that. And I, of course, I watch CNN because I want to follow the Trump uh, unfolding. 
The Trump show? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So what um, advice would you give, uh, being at this stage in your life right now, what advice would you give, knowing what you know, to your 25-year-old self? Well, the, uh, I think when I was 25, I was pretty well on the right path as far as myself. So I don't think I had to give myself any sage advisement. You know, the, uh, I, I always kind of lived the way I wanted to and, you know, that was fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you wouldn't have anything that... Well, you I'd give my, if I was going back for sage advisements, I'd have a lot to say to myself about women. You know, <laughs> I, I might add a few stock tips. There you, know, you go. I, I would have been, been a better farmer sooner than I was. You know, I would have had a hell of a lot to say to my 25 year old self. Well, you've had an incredible, um, incredible um, effect on our city. Uh, and we're so very grateful. I know I'm very grateful that you do what you do. No, and thank you, honey. Your, um, your farm is just so important and has created so many great memories for so many people at Sault Ste. Marie. So thank you for being Farmer Bob. Yeah, awesome. thank, thank you for coming, Marnie. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And thanks for the coffee with maple syrup, too. It's yeah. delicious. So. so can we get into the wine now? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Okay, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks again, Farmer Bob. <laughs>